These are Echeveria Violet Queen. I've grown these ones sort of in the shade here. They're shaded by other plants like this Paul Bunyan. Look at all the bumps in that. Isn't that gorgeous? And also this arrangement here which consists of Echeveria PVN. So lovely. Look at them. Beautiful yellowish purple PVN and also Romeo. I've got three different types of Romeos. Look at that. Beautiful dark tip Romeo. Sort of a lighter shade Romeo. And this one sort of in between. That's why I planted them together. But you can see the colors are just gorgeous. Also the Sedum Clavatum has already been frost uh, hardened. So these ones now are actually my gun Sedum Clavatum. So any babies that I would get from here would be uh, almost guaranteed frost hardy so last year i've grown this in my 50 area so they still have some sort of protection but this year they're out in the open even despite uh, our minus three celsius that we got recently they still looking nice and healthy not affected at all not a single leaf and i'm gonna go back to the violet queen here i'll show you a violet queen now this Echeveria Violet Queen here, you can see it's got more red tips being exposed to the sun and also the frost and the cold. So this one has been um, abused. I've been maltreating this one, not really. It's pretty healthy and it's got all this baby so it's formed a cluster. This is another form of Violet Queen. I've actually named it Nivalis just so I can distinguish um, between the two because there is an Echeveria nivalis and it's very similar features to the Violet Queen so this one is sort of more outward growing and much uh, intense color compared to my other Violet Queen Echeveria Maruba Benitsukasa. Look at the bumps. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at them bumps. Beautiful. And the color. This would have to be one of my favorite, favorite plants because of the color. I love red. So, but it's just beautiful. And those ones are just uh, new plants. So they're only a year old under my care. I actually didn't buy, I didn't grow these ones, I actually bought them already grown last year and a couple of them were showing bumps, oh, okay there it is, so that one there, see that little bump as well and this one did not have a bump and this one here which is showing bumps as well, this is my first uh, leaf grown. This is leaf grown and yet it still maintained or kept its bumps. But anyway, so this is a beautiful arrangement of a combination of different plants. So I've got Echeveria, uh, Graptoveria, Pachyveria and a couple or maybe Sedivaria because this one doesn't have any names but it's just so cute and compact and this is a Graptoveria Mappin and Sedivaria Leticia and Ro Leticia over here. There you go. And that one is Echeveria Rolly or Sedevaria Rolly, sorry. So Rolly Polly. There you go, that one. And a huge can survive minus four, this Ionium Sunburst crested one. And look at the cresting. Look at that. I like the way it sort of just uh, undulate onto itself. It's like really, um, I don't know, it just looks beautiful. <laughs> so this one now is another recent arrangement that I've done of combination of different succulents that's supposed to survive the frost and the heat. So this is Frank, Echeveria Gavoidis Frank Reynolds, Echeveria Apis, Setora, or Echeveria Setora, Echeveria Setora, Echeveria um, Latte Rose, and Echeveria, or maybe Sedivaria Violescence. So compact form, that's what the um, lady uh, calls it, 
uh, where I got it from. And this one is, what are you? This is a sedum cherry tart. It looks like a cherry as well, isn't it? Jin Mia Tenyo. So this is actually one year old. This is only one year old plant. I took a cutting or a leaf. I've grown a leaf last year from the mother and I'm trying to see where the mother, if I can remember it, I will show you the mother. So this is still pale compared to the mother. Where's the mother? There you go. That's Echeveria Jin Mio Tenyo. So, and if you look at the bottom of that, there's a couple more babies. And look at the color. It's just delicious. So Echeveria Jin Mi Tenyo. So I'm now hoping that this one would grow to be as pretty, if not prettier, than the mum. Now, a lot more other plants. This is uh, Cotyledon orbicolara, a uh, fat one that has now experienced minus three. There you go. So don't be afraid to kill your plant. <laughs> well, I'm not. And I am being rewarded with all this gorgeousness so this is a bluebird three-year-old uh, Echeveria bluebird that is not blue anymore but red so this is the bluebird another bluebird this is uh, Leira so this is only babies compared to that other one so that's probably about uh, two years old and that one is three years old but the secret is this one I haven't really exposed to the Sun I intentionally kept it that color so I can compare the two uh, so that one has been grown out in the open and out in the Sun and look how beautiful it looks now that one is a Ben Buddies so Ben Buddies in a pretty pot and Ben Buddies as well these ones that I'm still propagating and I've got a few and actually this one I started with just one plant and two and a half years later I have quite a few so from just uh, one plant and this one's other ones what am we looking at this is shamrock I think I better just shut up and I will just let you enjoy the plants and I won't be able to put all the names but I will try and if I miss some I'm sure you will forgive me Dolly Dale Two-Headed Ebony they're normally pink but this is variegated and the variegation shows as yellow you can see from inside there there you go so that's the variegated part so normally they're just like that and the color is more intense if you leave it out in the Sun like the other one over there so this is Aurora as well so look how uh, bread it gets and again the variegated part of it is just staying yellow yummy yummy plants
and this ebony is just so dark as you can see compared to the other ebonies so look at that it's just gorgeous the color see look it's quite dark now chihuahuaensis and Up to see them Nova. Look how gorgeous the colors are. So the Varia Hummelly. Crassula. These are green jelly beans, but it's not green anymore, it's red. Setora or set oliva. Potato, potato, not too sure. Victorera, more Victorera. And this Contempo, which is under experimentation. Look at the color. So I'm just hoping it's not going to die in the frost, but I think I have to put this somewhere safe now. But you can still endure one more night of minus one. So I'll put you back here. So this one, this Portulaca Molokinensis, this plant is now almost two years old and I bought two plants one I left in this small well I put it in the small pot and then the other one I put uh, in a bigger pot and you should I'll show you the difference so here is my Portulaca Molokinensis the big one this is only one plant but look how thick it is so this is uh, it feels a bit soft but it is surviving the frost. This apparently is not frost hardy. So once it gets to about, I think, 10 degrees Celsius, you're supposed to put it somewhere uh, warmer, like inside the house. But I'm not going to bring this inside. I'm just going to put this in the backyard that gets morning sun. But in here right now, we had minus three this morning and it's still alive. It hasn't been affected at all. Although I can feel, but just by touching it, that it feels a bit soft so which means it's getting a little bit sensitive to the frost or getting cold so i'm not going to give you a blanket but instead just going to leave you there for now and the next couple of days i'll find a spot for you where you can be nice and warm and snug but growth wise you can tell that this plant is much much bigger compared to the other one and that's because i put it in a very uh, rich soil so this is my intermediate soil for growing a lot of succulents really fast so and then the difference you can see the difference the other one is only like about this big and so this one's got lots of branching you can see from the bottom look how thick the stem is as well I've had these lithops for about two years and four months to be exact and from this lot only this one died and this is the third winter that is going to see. I keep them out in the open. They get rained on and a lot of bright light. They do get the afternoon direct sunlight. I've had a few of them as already flowered and you can see in here that's actually divided or it's actually propagated itself. And from two, I'm sure next year, so like those two here, I can see little babies inside. So hopefully that too will have uh will split up and have a couple of babies become four so I just notice this one see that one see there's another one that's about to emerge out of the middle bit there i haven't propagated the seeds or uh 
uh, taken the seeds and propagated it, but I've heard that they actually uh, grow pretty quickly. So I basically water this twice a year, not even water heavily. I just sprinkle it, give it a good spray, but not really saturate it. So that one is a bit dry, but you can see that one is trying to have, I think it's trying to split up or something. That one already had another baby and that one uh, the main plant has dried up you can still see the shell or the exo shell I call it uh, outside it but then this one hasn't really done anything yet but this one I would love to have a baby of this one because I think that's the only one I've got this one here uh, did not live here this is actually out in the open where it gets it's sort of partially protected but also exposed to the element and this one doesn't seem to worry the sun or partial sun and uh, the rain where it's getting at and I normally water that area and I kept forgetting that I've got this lithops here so that's actually seen uh, a lot of water so out of this lot of lithops that I've got here that one has seen the most watering and it's nice and healthy no babies yet but look at that and this one here I had a lithops here as well and I forgot to water it and of course um, it got attacked by mealybug and it died and I have another so so far I've got 20 and I have three that died on me and the other one is this one so you can see that it actually, um, I forgot to water it and you can still see remnants of mealybug there, that white stuff there in the corner. So it split up and it even flowered and at one stage I think and then the mealybug got to it and I forgot about it and then by the time I noticed it to water it or check on it, it's already dead. So anyway, that one has got to go somewhere else. So anyway, so this one... Cleospilos Nelly, that one, uh, with another really, really long, look at that, look how long that cute uh, lithops is. So the two of them together, they don't live here, they live on the protected area. And the ones that are in the protected area seems to be drier because uh, I watered them only when I remember. But then again, that one has flowered and now has got, has split up. So there's two plants there. So do you actually count that two or four anyway? So this one as well has propagated and split up. So now there's two of them. So hopefully next year I'll have four. Oh, the soil as well, I use 50% of my master succulent soil mix and 50% that composed granite for this mixture. It's just the dressings I use, I use granite dressing uh, on top and this one is basalt or basalt mixed with some little gemstone rocks from a special place just for dressing. Tetanopsis. Calcarium So baby toast is growing outside as well and 